Hello. Last time we got our people to move around and bounce off the walls properly. And we got the buttons working so that we can actually make the simulation start running and going around. So what we want to do this time, this time is to have the infections occur. When someone who is infected, denoted with red, uh, collides with someone who is susceptible, the susceptible person should become infected. So let's see if we can get that code up and running. Great. So first thing we have to do, it would be nice if we could detect if people are colliding. So what if we had inside our position a collision check? The position is what we need to know about. So let's go down here and start writing a new method inside position for checking if collisions are happening. <clears throat> okay. So we are going to have a public Boolean method called collision. And this is going to bring in another position and again the radius. Well, here's one thing. We know that the radius is part of the person. We know that it's static, which means we can talk to it here. We don't need to really bring it in and pass it in all the time. We could actually just start talking to it. So what do we need to know? We need to know the distance between this and the other. So <clears throat> this uh, distance between the other position, if that distance is <clears throat> less than two times the person radius, well, that means a collision occurred. If we can figure that out, the distance between this position and another person, if, if that is less than two times a person, the, the standard person radius, then we are going to have a collision occur. Well, let's go fix up these other things that require the radius, right? We're going to say this is based on person.radius. Just to make it easier, we don't have to pass this around everywhere. It is going to be just out there. Person dot radius. Use that number. Cool. Okay. To make a position, if we know the world and we know where we are, let's use person dot radius. Oh, that's getting a little long there. Okay, that feels a little better. Cool. So We've got a function here, collision. Let's see if we can use that one over here in person. Yeah, we don't need that, do we? No, and we don't need this anymore. Make our life a little simpler. We just have one place where things get created. So, public void. Collision check, and this is going to bring in another person. Well, we're going to say if my location has a collision with the other person's location, then it's time to check the states. If the state of the other person is equal to the infected state and my state is susceptible, I become infected. Set state infected. Great. So we have the structure built in our model to detect collisions between positions and now we have a collision check function for the people 
which will tell us <clears throat> what's going on. And it's going to be setting up, making infected, making susceptible here. So let's go back to our simulation. Simulation can move people, it can draw people, and we can detect collisions. So public void uh, resolve collisions. <clears throat> every person is going to have to check every other person to see if they are colliding. So for person P in people or person Q in people. If P is not equal to Q, so if we're not talking about a person colliding with themselves, and they're colliding, so P Well, let's just do the collision check. If P is not equal to Q, then I want to say P collision check with Q. <clears throat> this will get it working for every person to be checking every other person to see if they collided. Now this is still gray. We want to call resolve collision. That can get to happen out here in the controller back in our step. We have everybody move, we have everybody do resolve collisions, and then we get to draw. Perfect. Let's see what happens in our model as we try to run it. Reset. We have our one person, and if we start, boom, we start to see infected people as they intersect and collide with the susceptible people, we are seeing the infection spread. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, so now we want people to get better. <clears throat> we want them to know that they are getting better after a while. So let's start to code that up. Back inside the person, <clears throat> we probably need some more information. We need to know Let's make another one out here, public static int uh, uh, heal time equals five seconds right now. Okay, so how can we figure that out? We need to give them a little bit more information here. We're going to give them a private int uh, sick time, they start off with zero. They are not sick at all. We need to know they are healing, and it takes them five seconds in order to heal. But notice what we're doing in our simulation. We are ticking 50 times a second. So this is really gonna be five seconds times the 50 ticks per second. If we're going to be really figuring out how many ticks it takes someone to feel better, then we're going to have to be calculating this number there. Okay, next thing we need. Let's go through and make something to help people heal. So, public void feel better. If someone is infected, And then I need to make them feel a little better. So your sick time goes plus plus. <clears throat> if it turns out that my sick time is greater than the amount of time it takes to heal, then I have healed and my set state becomes uh, recovered. <clears throat> okay, so Every time somebody is sick, they are going to increase their sick time. If their sick time becomes greater than the amount of time it takes to heal, we make them be recovered. Okay, so back in our simulation. Everybody gets to move, everybody gets to draw, everybody resolves their collisions, 
Everybody gets to feel a little better if they can. Public void feel better. We're going to call for each person. Now let's make them feel a little better. Okay, cool. Last piece. Let's go out to the controller and right here, move, sim, feel better, resolve any collisions, and then draw. So if these ticks happen once every 50th of a second, that's what we set up, then we should be able to see people start to get better. Let's track them. Are you going to turn green here soon? Yes, this person was the first person to be sick. They became green. Others are becoming green <clears throat> as they become healed and recovered from the infection. Awesome. Okay, so next time, let's add in some sliders so we can control the amount of time it takes you to recover. We can do the other one so we can change the size of the individuals for their radius. And we can start to talk about the slider for the distance they are allowed to travel.